Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. When my daughter was born, I told myself that I will try very hard to make sure she did not get malaria before she turned six. I had read somewhere that children are a little bit more resilient to illness after the age of six. Because I knew how terrible malaria had been in my own childhood, I didn't want her to suffer as I had. So every day I would very meticulously spray her skin with insect repellent, her ears, her toes, her neck. And so instead of those deliciously innocent scent of babies, like fresh talcum and lavender, my daughter smelled of insect repellent. I often examined the mosquito window netting, checking for holes. A frequent refrain that friends and family heard from me when they visited our Lagos home was, Me choose or see some a mosquito. Shut the door quickly because of mosquitoes. My daughter will turn seven this October and she has never had malaria. This, for me, is a very tiny example of what can be achieved when we put our minds to it. I remember a cousin telling me it didn't matter what I did, that my daughter would get malaria because, well, everyone gets malaria. Malaria is so common that we think we have to have it. But we don't have to. Malaria can disappear from our lives forever. Malaria has been eliminated in 40 countries so far, with China being the 40th this year. But for us in many parts of Africa, it has not. And malaria is not the only disease which needlessly plagues millions of lives. Many gains have been made in the fight against malaria, but we must keep pushing to the final finish, because this parasite is very clever which is why malaria has existed on Earth as long as we humans have. Now is the time for the final push. Now is the time for faith and for hope. Because to believe that we can end malaria and neglected tropical diseases is an act of hope. There is nothing more important to the human spirit than hope. To have hope is to know that a future will be better than the present. It is to actively believe in a future. We have the knowledge. What we need now is leadership. Leaders who believe. Leaders who have hope. It is easy to ask, if we can eradicate this, and if all we need is leadership, then why haven't we? It is not because leaders are bad people who want malaria and diseases to continue to ravage this continent. It is because leadership is difficult. It is about making choices, about challenges to budgets, about deciding what to make a priority. We must make ending malaria and other tropical diseases a priority because we know it can be done. We know malaria kills. It is catastrophic when a person dies of an illness, but there is an added pain and poignancy when that person dies of a disease that is completely curable. Across this beautiful continent of ours, so many children have died of malaria. Those children did not have to die. Imagine what we have lost as a community as a continent, as a people. So many voices forever silenced. So much talent forever unused. So many ideas unformed. So much progress unmade. Still, a disease does not have to kill to have a profoundly debilitating effect on individual lives and on economies. The labor lost to the lethargy of malaria, the lack of faith and hope, the resignation that so many people like my cousin have who believe that malaria is inevitable. We cannot create a perfect world, but we can create one that is much better than what we have now. 
Malaria and other neglected diseases have blighted our past and continue to diminish our present. We've had enough. We must refuse to let these diseases steal our future. And thinking of this makes me remember my beloved father's words. My father was a professor of statistics. I have never liked mathematics. And once I took practice, practice exam papers to my father and I complained about all of the problems that I could not solve. And he said to me, show me the problems that you can solve. And I did. And then he said, when you get into the exam, first go through and solve what you are sure that you can solve, and then afterwards go back to the others and try solving them before your time is up. Our world today is bruised and battered by COVID. We are still learning about COVID, and it is of course imperative that we understand COVID. But we already understand malaria and other neglected tropical diseases. We can solve them. Sometimes it is an act of courage to believe that something that can be solved can in fact be solved. We need courage. If we eradicate malaria and other tropical diseases, our health clinics would be strengthened and would be able to focus on the things we do not fully know, on other diseases we do not yet fully understand. Because sadly, other pandemics will come in the future. It feels wrong, morally wrong, to know that we live in a modern world of self-driving cars and drones and visits to space. And yet, these ancient diseases, these diseases that we know can be conquered because they have been conquered in different parts of the world, are still killing so many people in the Commonwealth. This is the time to show what can happen with the collective will. And it has to be collective because mosquitoes and those diseases do not recognize borders. We can indeed, in the most literal sense, not only change the world, but change the world on a truly magnificent scale. Imagine what we, what we would unleash across the Commonwealth, across this beautiful continent, if we eradicated malaria and other tropical diseases. We can craft a new future for our people. It can be done in our lifetime. We can make history as the generation that finally rid the world of these terrible diseases. And now is the time. Thank you. <laughs>